Hi, I'm Jennifer of Celtic Knot Crochet, and today in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the Boho Mandala Necklace. There are two versions of this necklace. You'll see here this larger one that's three inches across and uses a wooden ring. It's the smallest one I could find, and it's quite the statement piece. And then something that's very similar, same, almost the same exact stitches, but just a little bit smaller version. You can see this is two inches across using a metal ring. So I'm going to go over all the stitches you need to make the center mandala, and then I'll show you how to attach it to the ring for each version, and how to attach these different elements, the beads and the tassels. Let's go over the supplies first that you would need for this project. You're going to be using size 10 cotton crochet thread. And then to go along with that, you'll be using a size 1.5 millimeter soft touch clover crochet hook. Helps prevent your hands from cramping. It's great to hold on to. Works very well for working with thread. You'll also need either a three inch wooden ring, I painted this one white, or a two inch metal ring. So you decide, the larger one's wooden, three inches, smaller one's metal, two inches in diameter. You'll also need a small tapestry needle. These work well for thread. You'll want a variety of wooden beads. I have quite the collection of beads. You can see there's different shapes, different colors. They're easy to find at your local craft store. Of course, all of these supplies, you'll see a link in the description below of where you can find ones just like this. And then you'll also want to use the Clover Small Tassel Maker. I have a video where I show you how to make that right up there how to make these tassels using the yarn or the thread that you use for the project so it matches perfectly. Very simple to use, great gadget because it makes the tassels nice and even and easy. So let's get started. Here is the mandala that is the centerpiece of the boho mandala necklace. But since it's with size 10 thread, I thought I would show you how to make this using much larger hook and yarn. That way it's easier to see the stitches. The first step, you will use an adjustable ring. To make the adjustable ring, you'll wrap your hand with the yarn, cross at the top so the working yarn goes down by your knuckles. Put the hook under the loop you just created and then grab the working yarn. This is the trickiest part. I pinch the bottom of that loop so that I can get my hands ready to crochet and then I chain one to lock it in place. I have a video just on this technique right there that you can click on to watch. It goes much slower. And then I'm going to chain two more and work 11 double crochets inside this loop that I've created. So that's one, and I want a total of 12, so that first chain three that I did there counts as the first double crochet. And I'm going to continue working into this big space here until I have 12 total. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve double crochets and this is where the magic happens. Sometimes this is called a magic ring because you pull this yarn tail and it cinches up that loop you made to where you have no hole in the center. And then I'm going to slip stitch to that top of the chain three that I made. Put my hook in, yarn over, pull through everything like that. For the next round, I'm going to chain seven. This will give me nice long loops. And 
and then I'm going to skip one stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch. Insert my hook, yarn over, pull through the stitch and through the loop on my hook. Chain seven again. Skip the next stitch, slip stitch into the one after that. I'm going to do that all the way around until I get to that last chain seven loop. We're going to do something a little different. Here I am. I've done five chain seven loops. I need a total of six. And for the last one, I'm going to chain four. And then I'm going to work a double crochet into the base of that starting chain seven. Yarn over, put my hook in there. Yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, through two. And that makes it so I end at the top of this loop right here. Now we're on round three. We're going to chain one, single crochet right into this loop right here where we ended. Then we're going to chain five, and then single crochet in the next loop. Now we're going to chain five again, and we're going to single crochet in the same loop. So this will create a chain five space between the large petals of the last round and a chain five space on top of each of them. So chain five, single crochet in the next space, chain five, single crochet in the same space. So here you can see, chain five in between, chain five on top, in between, on top. I will continue that all the way around. Here I am ending this round. I've done the chain five that goes from the last petal to the first petal where we began, this large petal I'm talking about. We're going to single crochet in that first petal from the previous round, and here you can see that's the single crochet where I started the round. And now I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to chain two, and then I'm going to double crochet in that first single crochet. And again, that helps me end right at the top of one of those loops. Here you can see what you would have so far. Round one, round two with the big spaces, and then round three with the smaller and more chain five spaces. Now we're ready to begin round four. I'm going to chain six. This chain six counts as the first half double crochet plus the first chain four space. Then I'm going to half double crochet in the next chain five space. Then I'm going to chain four again and half double crochet in this next chain five space. And I'll continue that all the way around chain four, half double. If you don't know how to do half double, it's very simple. Yarn over, put your hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. It comes out in between a double crochet and a single crochet. Here is a tip for you. After you complete that first chain six, I recommend putting in a stitch marker. 
That way you know when you get all the way around. Because as you're working, sometimes you can lose sight of where the beginning of the round was. So this way, you know that you gotta keep on trucking with chain four and your double cro uh, half double crochet until you get to that stitch marker. See, I know, okay, I know I have to work in here, and this is where I started. This is the chain six space that I started. And remember, working in the thread, it can be a little bit more difficult to see because it's that much smaller. So I recommend, if you're not experienced with thread, I recommend just using some yarn from your stash, maybe medium weight, with a size H or I hook, and then you can practice this pattern in a large size before you move on to the smaller size. Now that I'm here at my first chain six, it's the only chain six actually, but it's my first chain space, I'm going to count up the two chain, first two chains and put my hook into that top chain, the second chain, and do a slip stitch. And that closes up the round so that I have a nice even circle all the way around. For the last round, I'm going to chain two. This counts as my first half double crochet. And now I'm going to work four half double crochets in this next space. One, two, three, four, and then I'm going to work a half double crochet in the next half double crochet that we did in the last round. And repeat that for each space and each half double. So four half doubles in this space. And a half double in the next half double. And that will give me a nice solid edging all the way around. I've completed this last round. Here is my starting chain two. I'm going to insert my hook through the top of that chain two, yarn over, pull through the chain two, and through my loop on my hook. That's a slip stitch. And there you can see the mandala is complete. So this is enlarged version, and this is the actual version here with the size 10 thread. The stitches for the smaller mandala necklace are very similar to the large mandala. I'll show you the differences right now. So you still start with an adjustable ring, wrap the yarn around your hand, put your hook through the loop you just made, grab the working yarn, pull it through like that, and then according to the directions, you're going to chain one and then work six single crochets into this adjustable ring. So this is going to be a smaller circle than it was on the large mandala. Three, four, five, six. Six single crochets. Then I take that yarn tail right here and pull to close it up, and you can see now I have this small circle, and I'm going to put my hook into that first single crochet and join with a slip stitch, which is yarn over and pull through everything. And if I need to, if that hole's coming back, I just pull the yarn tail and it cinches that up. Then I'm going to chain seven. And instead of skipping a stitch like we did for the larger mandala, we're just going to slip stitch in the next stitch. 
And that's pretty much the only difference until you get to the joining round, which is round five. So I'm going to show you with the thread how you would join both of these mandalas to their matching ring. Here you can see the completed small mandala with the six single crochets in the center, makes a very small, small center circle. And then the lacy chain spaces moving outward. So that was round one, two, three, four. So now for round five, we're going to chain one and then place the ring in front of the motif like so and then we're going to carry the hook over the top of the ring and insert into the back loop, do you see that, of the next stitch. Then yarn over on the back side, pull through the stitch, and now you have two loops on your hook and you want it right at the top of the ring, and then you yarn over, pull through two. Do that again. So I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop of the next stitch, which is a chain, yarn over on the back side, pull through the stitch, and up to the top of the ring, and then yarn over, which is near the back side, and pull through the two loops on my hook. And this will secure the mandala to the ring in a nice, even manner. That way you don't have to worry about sewing, you're just crocheting it to the ring. Insert into the back loop of the half double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And I really like how it encases the ring and gives a nice pretty edge on the top and the bottom. You'll continue that all the way around and then end by slip stitching in that very first single crochet. Here is the completed small mandala on the small ring. You can see how the single crochet stitches created a nice even edge all the way around. To attach the large mandala to the larger wooden ring, I used a different method. You'll want to take the wooden ring and place it over the mandala. Of course, when you finish the mandala, you'll leave a long yarn tail and thread it onto your needle. Then you're going to wrap the thread over the ring and go back through that very first stitch. So you have one solid loop right there holding the mandala on. Then you're going to wrap around again, but this time you're going to skip one of the stitches on the front and put your needle into the next stitch after that, going from front to back. Pull the thread taut, and you can see how that draws the edge of the mandala up to the inside of the ring. I'll show you another one. Wrap the thread over, skip one stitch, put your hook uh, needle sorry, into the stitch after that. And you can see how that gives it a nice even spacing, but it prevents there from being any gaps in there. Do one more, and you would continue this all the way around, skip one, go through the next stitch. So what I did sometimes, every couple of threadings around, I tied a little knot on the back side, and that way I knew that those threads wouldn't loosen. So I'll show you how to do that. So I just did three, and I'll insert my needle through the back loops here of one of the stitches on the mandala, 
and that created a small loop and I'll put my needle through that small loop and pull it tight and that helps anchor it and you can see those stitches now are not going to be going anywhere. Here you can see the large mandala fully attached by wrapping the thread around the ring and through every other stitch then I wove in all the ends. To attach the tassel, the tassel is very easy to make using Clover's small tassel maker. I have a video showing you just how to do this. You can click on right there. That way you can make it in the exact same yarn or you can do it in a different color yarn uh, that coordinates well. Once you have completed the tassel, you'll want to put the cord that is the center of the tassel onto a needle and thread it through your bead like so. And you can put as many beads as you want on this. On this one here I put a large bead. This one I'm putting a smaller colored bead. And then what I did is I put my needle through the last round of the large mandala and work some knots there making sure that this hung down below like that. So you would secure it and then weave in those ends as usual. And then for the top I used a long strand of chain. In the directions it says to chain to about 35 inches and for this larger necklace you might want to do two or three chains. I'm going to show you with just one but so you know what it looks like. Here is the large blue one and I used two chains. Just gives a little thicker look since this is a bigger mandala. And I'm going to attach it using a certain type of knot and then I put some overhand knots in between all the beads so they stay in place. And you can do those in all kinds of designs as well. So you can see this one I used much smaller beads and then I put knots on either side so they would stay in that spot on the necklace length. And then when you get to the end you can either tie them together or sew them together with your needle. So let me show you how to put the chain on the ring. You're going to take the long chain that you made and fold it in half like so. Then you're, that way you know how long it is. And you make sure that you are opposite where you put the tassel because you want to be straight up on the other side so it hangs down straight and even. So if you see this is a chain five space right here and I attach the tassel so it's in line with that. So I'm going to want to go to that chain five space up on the other side right here. And then you can even hold it and if the tassel hangs nice and straight then you know you found the right one. And I'm going to take one end of the chain and I'm going to pull it through. I can use my hook or the needle. I'm going to pull it through the opening right there on this side of the thread and then I'm going to take the other side the other end of the chain and pull it through on the other side of that thread that's attaching the mandala to the ring. So you can see one on either side and with those ends lined up since I folded it in half I'm going to pull through 
all the way to where you see the loop from folding it in half and I'm going to take those two ends and put it through the loop. And this is called a lanyard knot. Very simple way of attaching a cord to something. And I'm doing it in a different color here so you can see, but you can decide which color you would like your necklace length to be. And that's all there is to it, to attach that. And then you might want to, like I did, over both sides of the necklace length, put a bead, and then I divided them in half and had some beads on the other side. So if I were to divide them in half, just to show you, I would decide where I would like those beads to go. So if I want it to be about an inch up, I just make an overhand knot like this. And before I have fully closed up the knot, I can move it around and then I tighten it up and then I would thread. Again, this is where you can use your hook. You can use the needle, but if you put the small hook through the wooden bead, you can pull that chain right through and that knot stops the bead right there. And then I would put another overhand knot on the other side of the bead. And that's all you do for adding beads to the necklace length. And like I said, you can sew the ends together because this is long enough to fit over your head. You don't need a clasp or you can just tie them together. So there you have the Boho Mandala Necklace. I hope you enjoyed making it. As you see, it uses very simple stitches and works up quickly. Please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to click to subscribe. Thanks for watching and make sure to watch the next video.